again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And here we are. It's miserable. Out it's kind of crappy out there. I I'm not going to complain too, too much because so many of my Facebook friends in other parts of the state posted pictures of snow on their yards and I do not have snow on my yard. Yeah, so there was snow up north yeah. and then one of our good friends who moved down to Florida was all like, yeah, I don't miss that. And then I was all like, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talk to those people in August. Right. That's and the thing. I would love to live in Florida when it's crappy here well I that's mean, dan and i talk about it we talk about what should we long term should we rent a place for like the month of february right it's not gorgeous in florida in february by any means but we wouldn't have to do february here like right. We, we right yeah i would definitely i mean if i was you know if my ship came in go bitcoin then um i would uh I would probably go down to Florida, uh, to, you know, to Miami. Honestly, right. I would go to a big city. Like I like that right. city. I mean, I would definitely go. I would somewhere beachy, yeah. more beachy, more yeah. rural. Yeah. So, so but you know I what? Know. It's now awesome. I, look at now we sound like ninety nine percent of the year, and also yeah. our trees make sugar. Yep. We have enough water that none of us are going to die yeah, yeah, yeah. if something weird well, happens. Well, and the wind generally doesn't kill you here. And yeah, <laughs> and. Uh, you know, Florida is only, and, and, and lots of parts of the world are only tenable, really, because of aircon. Yeah. I could assure you <laughs> that if the grid went out and people didn't have right. air conditioning, people oh might feel a lot differently well, we were, about I, living in swampy, humid, you know, gross I, places. When we were down there, I think it was the first week we were down there, we were driving, maybe it was with, just with me and Dan, and we were talking about... Because we were thankful, you know, you're in the car and you're like, when you first get there, you're like, whoa, air. And then some days you're like, okay, this is actually clammy. You know, or you, after you've gone on a bike ride, you know, so you're kind of sweaty and you're thankful to get in the car, crank up the air for of a few course. minutes, right? Yeah. And I thought about it and I said, you know, you, if you look at like the number of people who moved to Florida over the past, say, 75 years, I am confident that with the um, availability of air conditioning for homes and air conditioning in vehicles, that's when people started moving there because there's no way you were, you're going to go. I mean, it is not easy to live in Florida in August or July with no air conditioning. Right. I mean, it's sort of the same in D.C. Isn't and that kind of like gross and swampy inside and hot? The, Like especially away from the coast. The coast. Where I mean, you, gross. Yeah. Just gross. Anyways. No. So, um... So hi to everyone in Florida who watches the yes. show. We are grateful you do. <laughs> and, you know, it, it could be a satellite state because yeah. that's sort of something yeah. I'm seeing bubbling up just yeah. in general is, you know, sort of people pushing for more free states. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. first of all, that doesn't work. Right. Or you can go do a different flavor. Yeah. Something's yeah. going to be conservatarian and whatever. Yeah, yeah. But I do think we're trending towards a liberty oriented state here yep. in New Hampshire where basically government is restricted limited and transparent um, yeah in theory so today there is a bill i forget the number but it is going to be up at the state house for the senate yep. hearing i believe yep. and it has to do with the nullification of gun rights bills yep so that is just basically and i love this trend that i'm seeing right. in the state house where people are just saying well you know what we're, we're supposed to be a federation, yep. like, you know, we're sp states rights first, and then, you know, the federal government's supposed to be constrained and limited, and they're only supposed to be do these little handful of things, which, yep. of course, they don't. They do a lot of things they're not supposed to do. But um, so we're just starting to say it seems like there's an appetite at the state house to just kind of go, you know what, if there's a conflict between, you know, these laws coming from D.C., the DC you know, the, the overlords that are voted on by people, people who aren't who are, from New Hampshire. And we have laws in New Hampshire, then if there is a conflict between those two, then the New Hampshire law. So if the, the federal government wants to restrain guns or mm. institute some form of gun control that is inconsistent yep. with our values in New Hampshire, then we're just not going to listen to them. Right. So that's the bill that it's they're It's interesting. Hearing it came today. out of the House, obviously, otherwise it wouldn't be in the Senate. It'll be interesting to see what the Senate does with it. The Senate's a little tougher yes. to get things. They they. Senate? They look at different things differently. I mean, I but have to the tell you. the federal you. government. Yeah. The House will pass all sorts of stuff, and then it's getting it through the United States Senate. Right. But, I mean, you know, the, the New Hampshire Senate actually has a fair amount of power mm -hmm. because there are only 24 mm -hmm. sitting senators. And, um, frankly, there are things that go there to die that shouldn't die yeah. that really makes me question whether some of our 
Republicans up there are truly, if you look at their voting record, Republicans are just, you know, soft C yeah. Democrats. So, uh, you know, we're going to see what's going to happen this election cycle. So stay tuned, folks. Um, quickly, because it's New Hampshire, it does impact New Hampshire. It's a federal thing. But um, you were saying. Oh, yeah. So we have Big this. News. Good so, news. Good news. Finally. The mask mandate for public transportation, so that includes airlines, buses, ferries, and... Trains. Trains. Air, what, what automobile train? What's that? Bl uh, planes, trains, trains, and, and automobiles. And, automobiles. <laughs> and ferries. So uh, mask mandate for public transportation has been lifted. You are no longer federally required no. under a mandate to wear a mask in these situations. From what I could figure on Facebook, just limited, um, First, everybody was saying American Airlines and United Airlines were not were going to keep their mandates in place. But then I read that United Airlines changed their mind because the reality is, I, I believe, anyways, people are going to choose airlines that, that aren't that aren't requiring it. Which um, you know, honestly, so if we had here's a here's a great example for folks back home who are like, why do you guys like the market? What like why right? So imagine if you will that air travel was less regulated, mm -hmm. meaning that, you know, because it is actually, I mean, it's it's pretty much government yep. controlled. Yep. The airports are, the, you know, we can pretend, but it feels pretty like mm -hmm. you're in interstellar yep, yep. galactic travel vibe with, you know, when you're, when you're traveling now. But um, you'd be able to have airplanes or short flights that could be a nail salon. Right. Like, why couldn't you be like, oh, I'm willing to pay a premium yeah. to fly on and this two hour flight nails. while I'm having my nails right. done. You would have flights that would be like, no children allowed. Right. Some people don't like flying there with might be, screaming there children. There might be flights that allow smoking. Smoking. Uh, maybe like martini only flights. Yeah. You would have, you can bring your right. dog on the airplane flights, yep. right? That is what we mean when we say, hey, if you let the market work, everything doesn't have to be this lockstep thing. People will be able to pick and choose what they yep. want. And you would still have a cheap airline yep. that is just bare bones. That's like, you could go. Yeah. So you get the whole gamut from super fancy luxury yep. down to affordable. And that's what the market does. Socialism says everything has to be the crappy thing down. Here. Well, and I, you know, okay, the only part of aviation that I do think the government, for re good reasons, I think, are, it needs to be involved in is air traffic control because there are no lanes. There are no stripes for cars to stay in the road because you can't imagine. I mean, how would you fly a plane not well, knowing I mean, when somebody's going to fly into the side of you? Having friends that have planes. You've well, got a plan. You've got to submit a, a flight plan. It, it could, so it's, sure, but it doesn't a, have to be the government. That could be a private company right. that is insured um, that provides that service. But, private airlines could uh, have contracts with each. I mean, it, there's it ways. doesn't I'm not have saying, to be the I'm just government. saying. I think that's probably that one. I'm like, I can. That's the least of my problems. But I, as far as like regulating what can be flown and what, I agree with you. Like, why? Why? Why is there always just one option? Um, and because I stole my hair, my hair oh, shampoo don't try to on the way anything. there, and they stole my sunscreen coming okay. back. And then they were like, "We're not taking this. This is you are voluntarily." And I was like, "Uh, uh I am not voluntarily." Well, and, and what anything. are you actually going to do with that shampoo on the like? You know, and it, it 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 is boggling when you're because they're literally just following orders. But the extension of that that young man who couldn't look me in the eyes when he was like, "I'm, I'm sorry, sorry I'm, I, I, I am stealing it, but I, I'm going to tell right. you it's voluntary, right? Like you can't look me in the eyes." That is that same sentiment where you are stealing my shampoo because someone told you that's how it works is the same people who end up building Nazi camps and murdering humans and saying where I was it's just like, told to oh, do it. I was just told to do it, so I'm just doing um, it. So, but, all right, enough okay. of my tirade. So, so the federal ahead. judge yesterday said, and, and this woman, uh, she's a lady judge. She was appointed by Trump. Mm -hmm. She actually clerked for Cl Clarence Thomas. Right. So you know she's going to at least understand the, 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 the restrained right. role <laughs> of the federal government, or well, the supposed restrained role. So apparently the way they justified 
the mask mm-hmm. under um, under who who I think it was CDC the or, CDC yeah, was they said it falls under a sanitation rule and this judge was like mm-hmm. you know that sounds like BS so basically her ruling said that one they had exceeded their legal authority yep, which right I because agree. yeah because it's like no oh. there isn't a rule there that says you're allowed to do this and so to try and it, it under a sanitation rule is clearly uh, was clearly wrong, hence the decision. So exceeded its legal authority. It was uh, it improperly avoided um, comment procedure, notice and comment procedure. So as advocates for open government, you know that people are supposed to give you notice. You're supposed to give the public a time to comment. You know you can't just willy nilly if you're a bureaucrat institute. Well, you can because clearly they did, but you're not supposed to institute these rules that then say, um, oh, we're just going to do these things. So they didn't have public comment. Mm -hmm. Um, And then the third thing is they said that the mandate, as we've been saying for more than two years, was arbitrary and capricious. What does that mean? It means they just made a bunch of nonsense up and said, tough you gotta comply and two years later the system seems to be working a federal judge just said nope this is not going to work we're not going to allow this of course now i didn't know this so the department of transportation Mm -hmm. falls under the department of homeland security so department of homeland security for maybe the young ones watching only came about (laughs) after 9 11. it is contrary uh those of us who are like principled liberty people have been fighting this old haired late, you know, forever because the Department of Homeland Security should never have been instituted as Orwellian. I mean, just in the name, it sounds kind of like lockstep, goose steppy nastiness. Um, so yeah. So anyway, it's a small win. Yes. It's actually a big win. It's a big win. I mean, if you're, I mean, it's a big win for the average person who's just traveling and just wants to travel in peace, you know, like, I just want to get on a plane and get to my destination. I don't need to do stupid stuff. Right. And 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 again, you know, I, I tweeted this out yesterday, um, but I was like, you know, dear Karens, so dear people who think they have the right to control other people, I don't know what your mental dysfunction is, but maybe work on that. But dear Karens, you can still wear your masks yes. on your planes, trains, and automobiles and ferries but you can't make us do it. So you go and live in your mass formation if you need to, but sincerely from the thinkers of the world, we're done. So similar thing, but totally different, but it's the same thing with why is everything so literal? Why is everything so black or white? It's never, there's never seems to be when it comes to the government, um, from my perspective anyways, the. It always seems like we've got it wrong. So recently, because <laughs> we well, usually, I mean, they I, usually you know, do. sometimes good intentions. I mean, that happens a lot in lots of things in life where you make a decision because it sounded good. And then you realize, you know, afterwards that like, OK, that was really bad. That wasn't a good idea. So I read in the paper. This isn't what I was going to talk about, but this is what made me think of it. Um, I read in the paper. Oh, I take that back. I read on Manchester Inklink that last week at the Zoning Board of Appeals or whatever, you know, group that is there was a woman who lived I think on Orange Street um who has had chickens four a whopping four chickens in a coop in her backyard for a few years now this is what it is I don't know if somebody complained I don't know what the impetus was for her to go to the zoning board to seek approval to keep the coop right so I guess that's the, you know, ask forgiveness, be, you know, thing. Right. So they denied her because in Manchester, you have to have, I think it's a um, half of an acre of land and a single family home in order to keep chickens. And then on top of that, the coop has to be made of certain t- materials. It can't be out of scrap things, but it also has to be, have a 10 foot setback from the property lines. So, Okay. That might have all sounded good once, and I remember years ago when the, when we were having the chicken argument in Manchester, I pulled up um, the, the pr- chickens are coming home to the, roost. The property lines of all the alder, a bunch of aldermen, to show like how absurd it was that none of these people could hold, have chickens unless they like stored them in the middle of their driveway. So, uh, the, and that is sort of like that constitutional rule where they say a uh, hundred miles from any U.S. border yeah. is federally federal land, which means the entire New Hampshire. Yeah, right. Go ahead. So, 
I I started having a conversation because I'm always of the mindset like question people why they're saying things because her neighbors, all of her neighbors except for one, and I don't think he was opposed, went and said they're fine with the chickens. They love it. She gives them eggs. The chickens eat the bugs, all the stuff. Apparently at some point, not on her property, but on an adjacent property, there was a rat problem because okay. of chickens. Oh. So if you don't keep, I imagine if oh, you don't clean the, your, ki- yeah, okay. it attracted rats. So there was one neighbor who was concerned about the rats, but it wasn't her property. It was a different property, which is not no longer keeping chickens. So if all of your neighbors say, I'm okay with chickens, who is the government to say no? So I said that to somebody. I said, shouldn't you be able to, there's, okay, we'll have the zoning board. will have these guidelines, 10 foot setback. Okay, her coop is four feet away from the property line. But shouldn't she be able to just go get her neighbor to sign off and say, I'm fine with that. So if I want to put up a shed and I want to put it right on the property line, rather than getting permission from the government and using black and white rules that are probably bent a little for certain people, um, shouldn't I just be able to go to my neighbor and say, hey, I would like to build a shed on the property line. I need you to fill out this form that I'm going to go and bring to the zoning department and they're going to put it on record so that when I sell my house, the new owner says, oh, this is where you know. And I'm like, wait, so why can't we as people make some of these decisions? And that was over chickens. Because government is too big. Well, right. I just, well, I think it's sometimes just too obtuse. We're now saying you have to have this specific property with this specific coop, you know, very, so, very specific. And I, and it, we all know that chickens can be kept cleanly and safely in less than a half of an acre of land. Right. And also, I mean, given where we are as a result of the federal government's ridiculous monetary policy that is literally making everyone, everyone, everyone poorer. Yeah. Because inflation at, at shadow eggs. stats level is at 20%. I mean, anyone watching this, yep. we all know things have gotten expensive. So a chicken, at a minimum, could be a hedge against yeah. that. At least you can have eggs. You could have eggs and uh, they eat the scraps. So you're kind of creating a yep. little sustainable yep. bio, you know, ecosystem there. Yep. And um, I actually read about a guy years ago. He was a prisoner of war, I believe, or he had been kidnapped or something. It was like in the Philippines, some jungle Mm. nation. I forget the details. Um, I think he was a diplomat. Uh, He actually was, uh, he was kept, captured and kept as a hostage for two years. And he said he was uh, he was fed two eggs a day. And when they found him, he was in perfect health. Right, because there's a lot of protein and so, whatnot. So, and so at a minimum, like an egg, you know, if push right. comes to shove, is kind of like a nice little unit of maybe everything you need to like not die well, and to keep your brain and, functioning. And this and, goes to different discussions then. I, I mean, I feel like I'm having this discussion touching the same concept all the time with people now. So then it goes back to in the ordinance, only single family homes, which I understand why. If you drive by a lot of multifamily homes that, that where the t- landlord does not live, they're disgusting. Yeah. There is a <laughs> lot of filth in this city because you've got absentee landlords who one, don't care about the property. They don't live there. They don't care what their tenants are doing because they don't live there. So if you didn't have the rule for single family only, it unfortunately, due to the actions of others, you'd probably have a lot of not cleanly chicken coops. Let's just but go again, with that. But again, it's sort of like now we're once again legislating for Every, problems that could happen right. in the future that could be exactly. exceptional. So now we're punishing everyone. Exactly. So why aren't now we just for saying something that might or might not happen? If in you the have future. chickens, you have to register them with this. You have to register that. You, oh no, God, no, no pet no, license. No, no, I'm not saying license. <laughs> you have to notify. If we said everybody can have chickens, blah blah blah. Notify, notify the city that you have chickens so that when somebody calls and complains, you can be like, yeah, they have chickens. So then if they're, if you aren't keeping them and you have a rat a infestation or whatever, then the city can come to you and say, you're going to have to see there's them. already a law for that. That would be a nuisance law. Yeah. That would be a smell but they, law. But the that city would be doesn't a enforce those. Noise. We know that because well, you can drive thing by is, many so properties that thing. are not kept. They keep writing laws that they don't right. enforce. And, and, and it's like, we're just on this trajectory to literally like what? So, so tell me about fire. No, so literally, so this got me thinking because I'm in, outside cleaning up my yard and everything. And I think about, you know, everybody's starting to use their outdoor outdoor spaces more. And it made me think about the fire 
the backyard fire regulations in Manchester. Now, years ago... See, I would have just perfectly assumed that there weren't any and done I, everything well, only until I, something came up. Years ago. <laughs> years ago. Like, 10... Well, before 2011. Let's go with that. You could have a backyard fire, obviously safely. Don't be an idiot. Don't ruin it well, for everybody. That's a rule. Yeah, right, this is a just life rule. But you could have a fire as long as the, with the with the criteria that you're using it for cooking. Because you, how do you deny somebody the ability to cook food in the city? Like, so if you were if you had an outdoor grill fire and you were cooking hamburgers, hot dogs, whatever, smoking pork, whatever, that was okay. That was the rule. Then in 2011, I don't know why, I remember it, but I still don't know what the impetus was. I can guess what the impetus was. We, imp the, we changed the ordinance to now say, you have to get a permit from the fire department. Um, it costs $50 a year. You have to do it every year. They have to come and inspect your property. It has to be 25 feet from a structure or combustible material. Now think about what that is in your property. And it has to be over a non-combustible surface eight feet across. Okay, I can tell you, you get out of tape measure and measure 25 feet. If anybody did have an outdoor fire, they'd probably have to have it in the middle of the lawn or in the middle of their driveway. It's a bit much. And it makes me wonder, why? Why do we need this? Do we had did we have this rash of backyard fires that were out of control and causing property damage? No, I think I know what it was. It's fifty dollars a year to go into the fire department's budget. I am not arguing. The budget's a different, you know, that's a different argument. But I'm not convinced. To some 10, 11 years later, that one, anybody does this. Two, that it's needed. Or three, that it's doing anything to prevent un unruly backyard fires. So I, this is gonna be my new pet peeve for the, the spring because I think it's onerous. I think people should be able to enjoy their property. They sh can be responsible for their own property. And again, if anything else, it's up to the neighbors to decide. Both that, but then also let's parse it out even further for people who are just learning about libertarianism. It's like, okay, so it's your property. Yep. Uh, you wanna build a fire, what, so, so let's say the reason for this, if it's not for the money, then they're gonna tell you, but it's for safety, okay. right? So then it's like, but how does paying the $50 and Sa getting the piece of paper make anyone safer? If, if, if someone can actually like so connect that dot. So if there's a fire somewhere, are you saying that the fire department first pulls up and looks, oh, are they licensed or are they not? Well, or do they get in their red truck and whoop, whoop, and whoop, if you and look, go and fix the problem? It made me look, it makes, it's making me a little, pay a little closer attention. So there was a fire on Jane Street that pretty much ruined, destroyed a house. That was from uh, poorly disposed smoking, like cigarettes. <laughs> okay, so wait a minute. I can't have a fire pit unless I can be 25 feet. But, but you can but smoke, I can in smoke and burn a house down. <laughs> then there was another one for a no on a porch fire, and I'm like, well, obviously porches would is not where you should have a fire. So it, uh, we well, already. And I actually remember when we were still renting on the west side. Mm -hmm. So we used to live on Notre Dame, and uh, when uh, what. People from South Africa love to barbecue. It's part of our culture. We call it a braai. It's very, you know, like a Barbie in Australia. Yeah. I mean, you guys it's with okay. your hot dogs, but you know, we do right. a lot of meats and yeah. stuff. And so when we moved from the Upper Valley to Manchester, we brought our grill and yeah. we kind of put it out and our landlord showed up one day and he was like, no, you can't yeah, not you can't have, have a, a, on the a porch on malt three or more family units. Yeah, and I was just like, oh, really? And he was like, yeah, it's illegal to barbecue yeah. if you're a, a, if you're uh, three or more family like yeah. literally not allowed and i was just like okay like that seems weird i mean why because if it's three or more are they concerned now you're gonna have three burners could the rule have been well you could have one uh communal you know, one that everyone can share you know it's just every time and we every come up with there ought to be a law you write right. the law and it just doesn't make sense and every three unit building is not the same some three unit buildings are packed, you know, right. practically right on top of the other. And you can say, okay, well, that's probably not where you want to take propane. But then there could be another, th I mean, the- But what are we heating our houses with? I, know. I mean, it's literally, well, I, I, I'll never forget when we immigrated and we were living in San Francisco in the Tenderloin and, um, and people, 
I, I was I was genuinely shocked when I discovered that all the kitchens are supplied with gas mm. in San Francisco, which I love. I mean, I'm a cook, and it's it's yeah. much nicer to cook on gas than uh, electric. But I was like, so wait a second. The city is built on a fault line. Yeah. It literally burnt to the ground once before there was that massive yep, fire yep. at the start of the night. I think it was like Nin 19th century, yeah. right? And I was like... And somewhere along the line, like, we have these rules where they're like, you're not allowed to sit on a staircase because that's a fire hazard. But you have an entire city that is run on well, gas that will likely explode. So it's, again, you know, we're not mitigating for the right risks. And it's just, I think all these rules, all this, like, stuff is actually driving people Well, it insane. is. And, and, and that's why I feel like I'm just trying to have conversations with people just to make them think. Is the rule making you safe or is guidelines for safety going to make you safer? You know, it's one thing if the city said, hey, we think you should be, you know, this many feet away from a building and this, that, and the other thing because of, and then you go, oh, oh okay, fine. That makes sense. But I'm, I, 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 anonymously, I would never share your name or address with anybody if you send it to me. If you email me at manchtalk at gmail.com and tell me that you either have a fire pit in your backyard, some sort of outdoor recreational fire and you do have a permit or you have a fire pit recreational fire in your backyard and you don't have a fire pit i think i'm going to st just start keeping track and i think i might request this information from the fire department because i am kind of curious because i know a lot of people who have chimneys and all these different things who cares right I don't want to forget this before we run out of time. Um, today is Tuesday the 19th, and tonight is the Manchester City budget hearing at City Hall starting at 6 o'clock. Um, I'm going to go. I think I have something to say. I, I think using inflation as an ex excuse to spend more money is not a good idea because all that does is making it worse for the people in the city. Um, I get that the city has the same problems we do. Their electric prices have gone up. Their expenses have gone up. I get it. But at some point, something's got to give and we have to start thinking differently. Um, so I'm going to go and have my little two cents. Six o'clock, City Hall. Anybody can come down and speak for three minutes. Um, by all means, do. And that's all we got for this week because we're getting that warning thing. Um, it's spring. Things are definitely blooming. It's not a bad thing. Um, no snow in Manchester, so that's a good thing. It's uh, great. And honestly, I love one of the things I really love about New Hampshire is if you pay attention when it's spring and you look... You can see it's almost like a Monet. It bursts, well, it? well, it's like a Monet painting. Yes. Like the colors of fall actually come in because the buds, for the most part, mm. are the same color as whatever the leaf turns. So if you're paying attention, I like to do it when you're driving and you look in your rear view mirror. You can actually see the palette yep. of fall in this light, light spring color. Yeah, so and go and out and, and I enjoy love it. That. It always seems like one day you look and you're like, boom, it's here. Yeah. Anyways, Absolutely. Enjoy the outdoors. Rake your yards. Make your yards look nice for your neighbors. Um, walk and then your get dog. chickens and fire. And then get chickens and build a fire and all that good stuff. And I'll update you if I hear any more information. That sounds great. Peace Have a great out, week. Guys. Bye. Bye.